This one's real bad. It's got a big curve on the end there. The very tip is gone. But I'll grind it away far enough. There you go. Today on In the Woodyard, I've got a new tool. It's an ease do. We're going to talk about it right now. Thanks for being here, folks. My name is Chris, in case you're here for the first time. If you've been here before, thanks for coming back. I appreciate it. I really do. Today is an inside kind of day. It's already at the end of the day. It's like below zero outside. I do not feel like going outside today, and I don't only have maybe a half hour of daylight left. I just got done with my regular work, so now I'm going to do a little video just for you guys because I'm a nice guy. I'm just that way. So what I got sent to me, uh, this company contacted me um, from through my channel and they said, hey, we've got a product you might be interested in. It is a chainsaw sharpening tool. Of course, I'm interested in that. Here it is. We're going to open it up right now. It is an electric chainsaw sharpener. And apparently, it's getting easier. Let's see what's inside. So here it is. It is an Ease do E Z Z D O O electric chainsaw sharpener. Like I said, it's getting easier. Oh, it's getting easier on this side too. Look at that. And on the back side, it has uh, what it contains: electric chainsaw sharpener host, angle guide attachment, titanium plated diamond sharpening wheels. That sounds good. Three different sizes: special wrenches, carbon brushes, um, high quality titanium plated diamond file, which is really nice, and a high quality copper motor. Ooh, it sounds good. Electric chain sharpener. That is the model number. And we're going to open it up. I opened it already just to take a quick peek, but here it is. It comes in a nice little foam case, so you got a place to put it. It is in a plastic bag. It is a corded version, and here it is. It is an easy do. It has six speeds, uh, one through six. And it's got an on-off switch. You can feel it click there so it locks into place. And it also has an on-off switch right here. It has a cover which goes over the front plate um, for keeping the, the end from getting bumped. So and there's the cord. It, uh, I don't know, it probably weighs a pound, maybe two pounds, I don't know, it's not real heavy. Kind of nice, it's got kind of a rubbery grip to it. Uh, which is pretty cool. Now when I first opened it, what I was impressed with is that um, it has a guide, which is kind of neat, for different angles that goes on the front. So for sharpening chainsaws, this might be handy for people that um, want to use the guide, so that's kind of cool. Um, this is probably one of the cooler things. It has a bunch of, what is there, four of them? It looks like four different uh, sharpening wheels. Supposedly these are titanium slash diamond, so they might be better. Now I looked it up online, and you can get replacement bits just like this. I'm going to open this up here so you can see. You can get replacements. You get a package of eight, I believe was like $13, $12.99, something like that. So pretty reasonable actually, pretty pretty comparable to the the Oregon bits. So there they are, they're kind of shiny, they look like gold, and they definitely have some abrasion to them. I can feel the, the roughness. So we'll see, it looks like there's two that are 7 sixteenths, or 7 30 seconds, these two right here, and then the two smaller sizes for chains. So there's three different sizes, but you get two of the bigger ones, two of the 7 30 seconds, which is the size I use. So that's kind of neat. Now, this next little item I'm gonna show you, well, I'm gonna back up first, I'm gonna do this. You get this little wrench, and another little wrench so you can see what sizes you have for your bits right here. There is the 7 30 seconds, the 5 16 and the 5 30 seconds. And there's a, a little guide that you can use for testing to make sure you got the right one. And then this is a wrench uh, for taking off the the bits off the front, and there's a little uh, screw driver head thing that must work somehow on this. I'm not sure what that's for, but there's that. But this little package is a package that I was very excited to see because you do not get this with any of the Dremel tools. These are extra brushes that come with the tool. And your brushes generally go in right where you see these little screws here, that Phillips screwdriver. Uh, 
a screw right there and then this one right here the brushes usually go right in whoops right into the top so spare brushes are really nice because a lot of people don't even know that when your Dremel quits working, you need brushes uh, to replace. I didn't know that when I first had it. I just quit working, so I bought another one. I figured I burned it up. Well, no, it was the brushes that died. They wear down, actually, over time. A lot of you people that know a lot about electronics, electronic components, and electronic motors know this, but I'm a dummy. I didn't know that, so now I do. And now I'm going to have to order some for my Dremels because I have two of my Dremels that are actually dead, but maybe not. Maybe the easy do will replace the Dremels. Let's find out. So here it is, and I just called it easy do again because I keep wanting to say that because on the box that it came in, it says it's getting easier. So I keep keep thinking easy, but it's not. It's ease do. So there, I got it right this time. So yeah, it's a nice little unit. We'll give it a try here. First thing I'm going to do is I I got the the diamond, titanium, platinum. Gold bonded, no, it's just, it's a diamond titanium bit. Uh, I'm gonna put that in and get it tightened up here. So I put that in. Uh, this is the lock you push down and it locks the uh, shaft or arbor, whatever you call it, from moving. I'm gonna tighten it up with a little wrench. Look at that, it's tight. It seems to spin really good. Okay, now we're gonna do a little sharpening, but I'm gonna talk about um, these first. They are available on Amazon. I looked it up. They sent me this for free to try out, obviously, because they're gonna get a free, uh, little video I'm doing for them. But I looked it up, it sells for $39.99 on Amazon. You can get eight additional titanium diamond sharpening uh, wheels, they call it, but they're these stones, I don't know. Uh, they are available for $12.99. And this brand is very similar to some of the other ones. Obviously, it's very similar to a lot of other rotary tools like Dremel and some of the other brands that are out there. Um, there are other brands that are very similar in design. They might be almost exact. I don't know. But there's one that's called a, a Goxawe. It's G-O-X-A-W-E-E. -E. Then there's another one that's called a, a Sishi. It's S-E-E-S-E. -E -E. They're all about the same price. Oh, and there's also a Sharp Pebble is the other one. So that's the name of it, Sharp Pebble. And they're all right around $40, give or take. So that's one nice thing, because your cheapest Dremel you can get is around $60. Um, some of the better Dremel tools are that are bigger like this one. The one that I bought, I've got a 4300. Um, I don't know if that's the current model. I doubt that it is. It's a couple of years old now. I've got a 3000 and I've got a multi one also. But the uh, 4300 was like 110, dollars something like that. And my 3000 that I bought that's similar to this was like 70 or 80 bucks. So this is cheaper, obviously. Um, you're not paying for the name brand like you are Dremel. The thing I like about Dremel, they've been around a long time. Everybody's copying them and they're originally made in Wisconsin. At least that's where they originally came from. But we'll give this one a little try and we'll see how it works. I got a feeling it's gonna work great. We'll find out right now. So here is a little instruction sheet that um, they send along with it. Now on the other side, it's got a cute little girl on there with a little easy do on there. I don't see the tool at all. She's just standing by some wood with some safety gear on. So I'm thinking this was just kind of a canned shot that they bought. Um, but yeah, they put their uh, little information. You can go online on YouTube and look at a, a guidance video. Uh, there's a manual and I think it's got a, you can scan it and you can get all that stuff. Uh, and then on the other side is the instructions as far as how to do it, um, what the parts are. It's all listed up in here. How to pick out your wheel size, how to put the uh, bit on, um, and then how to sharpen. It shows a little bit with angles on there because um, it has the angle attachment. Um, so anyway, there's the instruction sheet. Now we're going to do some sharpening. So every time I sharpen, I wear safety glasses, and I wear glasses that have bifocals. This is a two-power uh, cheater that's on there. Uh, it helps me look, get really close to see really good. I have nearsighted vision, so I can actually see really good up close, but this helps a lot to really see how sharp I'm getting. I wear gloves all the time because the chain is razor sharp when I get done, and I always wear earmuffs. I wear these all the time when I sharpen too. Okay, so when I sharpen, I always mark a tooth um, so I know where I'm starting. And this tooth, if you look close, you should be able to see that it's kind of jagged on the top edge here. Um, the tip is a little rounded, and some of the other teeth, teeth are not very sharp. Uh, it's not a bad uh, 
tooth as far as the sharpness right now, um, but we're going to make it a lot better. Um, I like it to be as sharp as possible so that it, it cuts fantastic all the time. Now this is going to be a challenge for me because I literally have to wrap my arms around the camera with a tripod in front of me to try and do this. So I'm going to turn the, uh, the Ease Do sharpener on right now. I got the bit on it. It looks very shiny. It looks very disco-esque. And we're going to give it a try. Okay. So that is on one. The speed of one. I'm going to turn it up to six. Seems to run really good. The arbor's nice and straight. I can see that the bit is going around. Let's give it a try and see what we can do here. I'll try to do this with uh, my arm reaching around everything. Whoops, give the camera a little tug there. I'm gonna have to go in front, then around. Here we go. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna give it a try. Well, that's interesting. This must be diamond because there are no sparks. And when I cut with my uh, Oregon bits, there are sparks that fly. So, that's interesting. No sparks. Yeah, it, it sharpens them for sure. Let's try, let's try this one right here. Let's just see if I go in like this. Boy, you just barely touch it. You don't have to push at all with this. It's the other grinder, you gotta push a little bit. Now that tooth, I don't know if you guys can see, it's got a real jagged edge there. Um, we're gonna just give this a little touch and see what happens. Wow. I don't know, I'm sure this thing works just fine, but that bit is fantastic. I mean, you got really good, fine control with this diamond bit. I'd say more so than you do the Oregon bit. So see, this one's got a big chip out of the front of it there. Watch this go down here. And I'm barely touching this. I'm just barely touching it. Look at that, it's sharp. Holy smokes, this thing looks great. Let's give this one a try. Huh. Um, it's looking great. This one's got a, a bad tip you can see right there. Wow. That's fast and easy. And I'm, I'm just taking my time because I've never used this tool or this bit before. So I don't know exactly, I don't know exactly how well it's working, but it sure looks sharp. Go back to that one there. Let me make sure it's still on in the camera. I'm gonna bring this forward a little bit. I think we're better lined up now. And this is awkward the way I'm holding this. I'm kind of holding it almost like a pencil instead of like I normally would with my whole hand. Let's try this. Nice. Very nice. It's sharpening very easily. Hardly even touching it. I mean, I'm not pushing at all. It just kind of eats it right up. I'm sure there's much less friction, which means it's probably not getting as hot. Because I don't see any smoke. I don't see... I'm going to try this. I'm going to sharpen this one. I'm going to feel it real quick with my bare hand. And just see how hot this gets. So I'll take my glove off here. It's not even... It's just barely warm. So I'm not heating the tooth up at all with this bit. So that's kind of cool. So for those of you that are worried about your, your, uh, your teeth getting um, untempered,
that tooth's really bad. It's got a big chip out of the front there, so I'm going to grind this one down even more than the other one. Yeah, it takes it right off. Right down, right away. Cool. This one, the tooth is not bad. This one's got a big chip out of it right in the front. Nice. Nice again. Very cool. Okay, we're going to do a different camera angle so you can see the rest of these then. Okay, I switched the camera angle so you can see this tooth a little better here. This, uh, this is the top plate. This one I have not sharpened yet. And I'm going to keep track of that one because I'm going to spin to a really bad tooth here. Because there's a couple coming up that are pretty bad. Right here, this one. This one's real bad. You can see this is the top plate's got a curve to it. The tip of it's gone. Uh, this next one right here is all raggedy. Uh, this next one right here is kind of curved and it's raggedy. You can see it's pretty bad. So we're going to go back to that one that I left off at and we're going to start there and then sharpen. So on a, all the other sharpening videos I've done, and you've seen other videos I'm sure on other people's channels, you got to get the gullet, like Buckin says, you got to get the gullet, which is right in here. And then the top plate, you want it to be flat. You don't want to have it curve off. You don't want to have it curve down like this. You want it to be flat right to the edge. So you want just a straight, straight edge there. And you want that tip to be an actual point. Uh, so you want this line to be nice and smooth here, which I'm getting from this bit really nicely. Um, as good, if not better, than anything else I've ever used. This diamond bit is, uh, it's the, what do they call it? It's the works, it's working. So here we go, we're gonna do some more sharpening. Look at that, you see the edge just came to life there. You got that white line across there. Perfect, perfect. Now this one's got, the tip is gone. Let's just watch what happens here. Done. Very nice. A little bit on the tip yet, I can see right there. Got it. Okay, go to the next one. This one's not terrible, but Give it a little there. See that line develop? Perfect. The next one. This one's got that at the bad point right here. Shouldn't have done that, but there we go. Nice. Next one. Done. Boy. This one's real bad. It's got a big curve on the end there. The very tip is gone. But I'll grind it away far enough. There you go. Back to the tip. Here's another one's got a chip out of it right in the middle there. And later watch that line develop. And there it is. Beautiful. Watch this one. This one's all curved up and nasty. Oh, a couple sparks there. There we go. Beautiful. Do this one. Done. Next one, this one's got a bad edge on the tip here. Done. This is quick and easy. It is getting easier. Done. This one's not too bad. Yeah, got that edge. This one's not terrible. Nice. This one's got all kinds of nastiness here. That whole top plate's got a big scar across the top, you can see all the way through. Whoops. You can see it right in the tip there where I shined it up now, I just touched it. Yeah, that's not a good tooth, but it can't go back much farther than it is. That tooth is bad. That's good. Last one, you can see the tip on this is gone. Watch it come back to life, right? No, right there it is. 
You see that tip right? And just touch it here. Boy, you just touch it, you got a shiny spot. There you go. Okay, so there it is. The ease do. What I like best about it is the bit. And it hasn't changed shape. It's just warm. It's not even hot. It's just warm. That's amazing. That it's just, oh yeah, you, it's warm. Yeah, you can't hold your hand on it. But with the other bits, the uh, Oregon bits that I've been using, they wear down faster. I could just tell this one doesn't look like it has any wear at all yet as far as any kind of a, a concave to it. And um, there's no sparks. The teeth don't get warm. I mean, just like a little warmer than room temperature. That's all. And the diamonds obviously work if that's what's actually in there. It sure looks pretty, whatever it is. Um, but as I go through and I touch them here now, I better use my glove or I'll cut myself. So as I go through and I touch them, just feeling the tips. Yeah, they're just razor sharp. They are right there. Yep, yep. They got that cat claw sharpness just like you want. This thing works. I like it. I like it a lot. So the next thing that I would do is I will take my depth gauge and I will slap that on here and I'll give this tooth a, a feel. Yeah, that looks feels low. I just check these occasionally to make sure. Yeah, that one's down. See, the last time I sharpened this particular um, chain, I took the rakers down two strokes, and I can feel that it, they're, they're, the uh, depth gauges, the, the rakers, some people call them, they're still really good. They're, they're flat, you can see. And a matter of fact, as I look at them, I can still see file marks on there if I look really close with my lenses. When I look close at these, because I can get really good, I can still see file marks. And if you can see file marks, that means they're not getting polished yet. But if it starts to look smooth or shiny, then you definitely are, yeah, I can see this one. I can see a couple lines on there yet. Here, I can see file marks on this one yet, too. So I'll, I'll check, check one more here. Check this one here. Yeah, I can, it's, it's, below, it's below this level, so we're good. But when I do sharpen, uh, not sharpen, when I do take my depth gauges down, um, this is all I do. Um, I got to go to the right side here. So this is the opposite side of where I'm going to be pushing. So I'd push this way. And when I do this side, I would be pushing this way. This is a Husqvarna. It doesn't matter, but you can use any kind of a flat file that doesn't have teeth on the edge here. You can see there's no, there's no cutting edge um, right here on the, on the actual file. So I would go to this far side and all I would, I'm not going to push down because I didn't want to take any down, but I would just give it one, maybe two strokes like this. And then I would go to the next tooth and I'd give it one, maybe two strokes, depending on what it needs. I would do all that side and then I would switch to the other side and I would do one or two strokes on that side and do them all the same. So there you go. Sharp teeth, ready to cut. I got one more to do. Okay, now, so now this chain, I have not sharpened at all yet, and I'm going to sharpen it. I'm going to mark a tooth. There we go. Tooth is marked. And I'm going to do this like live speed, kind of the way I normally sharpen. So you're going to see about how long this takes. I am running this, just so that you all know, I'm running it at number six, as fast as it'll go. So here we go. I'm going to do this regular speed. So time me starting right now. Some bad teeth on this one. There's some really big chunks out of these, so it's going to take a little longer than normal. It's not just a regular touch-up. I can tell I must have hit the ground. All these teeth got big chunks out of them. Okay, here's the first problem I've had, is my bit started loosening up. So I am going to uh, put it back down. I 
There we go. I retightened it. It's ready to go again. So I guess that's a little chink in the armor. It loosened up on me. Try that again. I'm going to leave off on this one. That's a bad piece there, wow. It's got all kinds of chunks out of it. Yeah, good again. This is a bad one too, the whole tip is gone. Somebody must have been cutting the ground. I have to fire that guy. Another one, the whole tip is gone. A lot of grinding to get it back. There we go. Better. Oh, that one's really ugly. Oh. Yeah, it's a little stub now. But it'll cut. Yeah, this chain is probably about at the end of its life because I've got some little stubbies in there. And they all seem to be on the, the right side. Or your left. The right side of the saw. Anyway. So I have the tip of the bar up against the vise here, and my arms are reaching around the camera and around the vise to hold this. Oh, that's an ugly tooth there. <laughs> Niggle tooth. Back to beautiful. Tip on that one is gone. The tip on this one is gone. It's still not back. There we go. That one wasn't too bad. This one's not too bad. This one's bad. That one's not too bad. Just the tip on that one's starting to go. Getting better, getting closer. Better. Oh, that's not good one. The whole tip is gone on this one. Better. Tip on that one's gone. A couple to go. This one's a nasty one. Better. Very good. Let's just take a look. Well, this one tips still, but needs a little more. They look good. All right. Easy do to the rescue. No, ease do. Guess that wrong again. Anyway, it works. The bit's the best part. 
So I just might be buying some of those bits for all of mine. Now I feel these, they are just razor sharp again, just the way you want them, nice. Now I'm gonna check my depth gauge again. Check the, check the rakers or depth, 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 depth gauges on the chain. Yeah, they feel pretty good. I, I took these down. Yeah, they're right, right where they need to be. I took these down last time I sharpened, so. Yeah, they're all below, just, just below. I can just start to feel them peeking up there. So they're good. You can see they're still flat. Um, if I look real close, I can still see a little bit of file marks. So depth gauge-wise, we're still good there. It's pretty tight, so I think that's good. I think we're good to go. So there I have it, the Ease Do works. I just sharpened uh, two chains and the bit is not worn at all. There's no curvature to it. Cut just fine, I cut it on high speed. Um, I'd say it's every bit as good as the Dremels that I have, that I've been using for years. Um, I have four different Dremels. I have a, a battery operated one and I have three corded versions. This is every bit as good as the Dremels, worked just fine. Um, we'll see long term how it does, but I do like it. And for forty dollars, you can't go wrong. I like the bits. Like I said, you can get an eight pack for uh, twelve ninety nine, and I think these are the way to go with the bits. These diamond bits, they seem to be, they seem to be the the thing to, to use. Uh, I'm not saying that the Oregon's are bad. That's what these stones are right here. There's the difference. These work, um, but I think this might be even better. Not heating up the. The teeth at all, no sparks. It just cut really well. That was pretty awesome. So thanks to EaseDo for sending me this. If you want to send me a couple more, I'll use them. I like it. So that's it for today, folks. Here you know what to do. Hit the buttons, hit the like, subscribe, share all that good stuff. Tomorrow, come on back. We'll do some more fun stuff. Between now and then, get outside, get cutting. Good night, Irene. Mm -hmm.